Well, I wanted to do another video about gas masks I've talked about before, but go into a bit more detail. And today we're going to look at the S10 respirator. Um, as many of you know, this is like one of the personal favourites of mine because it's such a good mask. Um, I've got two S10s, so we're going to get both the S10s out. One's one from the 80s, one's one from the late 2000s, so you've kind of got one at both ends of the S10's production run. Um, and then we can have a look at some of the features on them. So, in no particular order, let's have a look. I think this is my old S10, because it looks a bit sort of more aged. And Avon 1987, so yeah, this is the old one. And we're going to get the new one out and then we'll talk about both of them. I also have some accessories for the S10 in here, so we're going to talk about those as well. So we'll put this bag down here for now. Put this S10 here and I'll hold them both up in a moment. And here is my newer S10. This one, as you can see, Avon 2009. So... This is really both ends of the production run of the S10 with both of these masks because both the S10 went into service I think supposedly around 1986 although I've seen some conflicting things so 1987 is pretty early into that. There's not really a date when it officially left service because Britain swapped it for the GSR um, but I don't think that was an overnight change. I think supposedly it was meant to be around 2009 and then the GSR went into service but apparently Scott couldn't make them fast enough or the government didn't buy them fast enough so the S10 lingered around for a bit longer. But regardless you've kind of got two masks at both ends of the production run and as far as I can tell both of them are very similar. They didn't actually make many changes. Um, you know during the production time they both kind of look identical. Um, so there's you know that but uh, if you're wondering about the outserts those aren't actually red lenses they are outserts on this because the S10 can fit outserts around the rims so you'd normally if you were normally having it issued you wouldn't have outserts if you needed something where you might be using flashbang grenades sort of as a counter-terrorism thing things like that um, you'd have the mirrored outserts and the idea is that you know they kind of reduce light coming into the mask so if there's bright flashes and things, they um, you know obviously stop your eyes from getting blinded. They also, um, I think, are meant to look a bit intimidating. For example, if the SAS was wearing it and storming a building, it kind of goes to the intimidation factor of it. Then they did a couple of different coloured outserts. And as far as I'm aware, because I've not really read anything that's definite on these, these are made kind of as laser de designation things. Um, like, for example, USM-17 during the Gulf War had the green outserts made. Um, for laser designation, for you know, like ground teams for laser designating for aircraft strikes, airstrikes. Um, I think they're a similar thing to that. The red ones as well, if you're wearing it in the dark, your pupils won't change size because of how red light works. So everything that goes through the mask ends up looking red. Um, and that's actually good for, you know, if you're in the dark um, and you're wearing it because you actually... If you're in quite dark conditions and you wear this, although you can't make out colours, stuff does appear brighter for some reason with the red outserts on, but there you go. So, what makes the S10 so good? I'm going to put my new one down and look at the old one for a minute. As I said, they're both very similar. Very lightweight face mask. Um, I haven't actually weighed this, but this is going to be under 500 grams, I would imagine. It's really light, because uh, there are some gas masks that weigh almost 2 kilos. You've got your 40mm NATO intake on the left. On the other side you've got your secondary sort of exhale valve and voice diaphragm. One thing I'll point out with these is that they did S10s in both left and right handed shooter configuration so this bit just switched around. Some of the other Avon masks in the S10 family but not the S10 itself were designed so this could switch sides. Uh, you know you take out a blanking plug, my CT12 does that but my FM12, FM12 doesn't. So it doesn't seem to be like every mask they did it on. Um, but anyway, so that's what that is. You've got you know your secondary voice diaphragm there and your primary uh, in intake valve there. You've got a drinking tube in this mask. That's kept with this. So you basically pull this out, unravel that. Uh, then you connect that to your bottle, hold the bottle vertically up. You can move that lever to get the straw into your mouth. And then you um, you know simply use gravity to feed the mask of water. I can't demonstrate that because I don't have the um, canteen with a bottle cap that accepts that, but if I did I'd demonstrate that to you. Um, so you get a good field of view of this mask on, and obviously it's got your oral nasal cup on the inside, 
so it's not going to, you know, um, fog up too much when you're using it. Very comfortable mask. It's got rubber straps, but they are fairly comfortable. You adjust them by unclipping them, pulling them through as much as you want, then clipping them so it will keep your size. They're also a bit stretchy as well, the straps themselves, so that makes taking it on and off easier. Um, this is the one I've got kind of configured for use. So I've cut the drinking tube in this one down a bit so it fits into my mouth better if I wanted to use it, but again, I don't have the cap. Um, what I'm going to do is, if I can pull this off for you here easily, I will show you the underside of this. There we go. Right, so the cap that's on the front of the S10 is this thing. This doesn't do much in itself, but what we have here is, I think they call it the voice trumpet. Your exhale valve is there, but what this does is the shape of it um, means that basically your exhale valve acts as a bit of an amplifier because it comes out into this section which kind of increases the volume of it. So that just literally clips back on the front. Everything on the S10 just clips and unclips. It's very easy. Same with the outserts. Um, these aren't the ones where you have to kind of stretch the outside of the outsert to put on. You can just literally pull it off and push it on with a bit of force and they come off and on. Um, as I said, the insides of the masks are fairly straightforward. Right, I'm going to put this one on. Because my hair is short enough, as I said, in other videos I can just pull masks down onto my face. That will get me a good seal. Yeah, it's airtight. So yeah, the mask is comfortable, the mask is lightweight, I have a very good field of view. Uh, it does vibrate a little bit sometimes if there's not a filter in, but uh, other than that, because you can hear that the vibration stop now. Other than that, it's very good. Um, yeah, as I said, it's very comfortable, way ahead of its time in the 80s, I guess. I think the S6 compared to the S10 kind of had more leaps forward, but the S10 is a really good design, it does everything well. So I'm just going to take this off now and we're going to have a look at some of the other accessories that this mask came with. What I have here is the radio thing. Um, basically how this works is this end, ends a microphone. You clip this on, I'll demonstrate this, where you have that kind of secondary exhale valve, voice diaphragm, whatever you want to call it there. This clips on here. There we go. You can position it however you want it. And then you would connect this to your radio. And the idea is you have your radio on your um, sort of chest carrier or whatever. You plug that in, people can hear you really clearly because obviously the voice diaphragm is going straight into the microphone. Because people have complained with the S10 that yeah, it doesn't have really big proper voice diaphragms like the American masks. It didn't really need it because you'd either be talking into a radio directly attached to the mask or if you're close enough people can hear you fairly well because both of the voice diaphragms together, you know, work well. Yes, I suppose it would have been better with a big voice diaphragm on, but it doesn't hurt the mask, I think, in my opinion, because they kind of worked around it. So yeah, you'd have that plugged into your radio. And the other thing I have for it is the anti-flash hood, or whatever you want to call this. It's kind of like a balaclava for a gas mask. And the idea of these is that you could have this, I'm sure you've seen these um, worn by sort of special forces type guys. You'd have this over the mask itself, and what this does is it ends up, um, you know, if there's hot sparks and things from breaching charges or flashbangs, it stops the mask setting fire. The mask shouldn't set fire anyway, but what I understand is this is kind of a flame retardant material, and that just helps as well. It also kind of adds to the intimidation factor. So I'm going to try and fit that to the mask, and then I can demonstrate it. Well, I've not got that configured completely right, because it's not all that comfortable. But there you can see, I've got the filter on. I don't think I've quite, quite got an airtight seal now. Probably got to part the cloth into the actual head unit. Again, I'm sure if I wanted to, I could take it off and try again. But this is just to give you an idea. But you'd have, obviously, your radio bit attached to that side that goes through the hood. You'd have your filter on that side that goes through the hood. You have your eyepieces visible. There's elastic there so they don't get in the way. And yeah, everything works still with the mask. So I assume what I've done wrong is uh, probably putting the bits together in the wrong order. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how all the parts fit together. Okay, so I have my mask on again with an airtight seal. But yeah, as I've said, sadly, uh, many times before, the S10 was um, got rid of. Basically, the British Army or government in something that was a bit dodgy, said to Avon, yes, you've proposed lots of good ideas for the mask to replace this, but we've probably had a backhander from somebody else, and now we're using an American mask. That's basically one of your masks anyway. I don't want to get too much into that, because a lot of it's speculation. But, you know, it's a bit shifty that 
uh, the British government had used Avon masks pretty much since World War One, definitely since World War Two. And then all of a sudden, uh, in the late 2010s, they, you know, say, oh, we don't want your mask anymore, actually. So, um, yeah, Avon did some successes to this that I've talked about before, and I'm sure I'll talk about many times again. Uh, the FM12 and CT12 being two of them. Basically, what they did is they took the S10 and everything that worked with it, and they kind of just reduced everything down in size. The mask sits closer to your face, but the eyes are smaller, so you can see just as well. But again, it makes the mask lighter and smaller. Everything's just kind of sized down. The mask is just as comfortable, if not more comfortable. But it weighs less and it's even more compact. The ridges around the mask is so NBC hood sit on the mask a bit better, but it's not really a needed feature. But there you go. The S10, definitely one of my favourite masks ever designed. For when it came out in the 80s, yes, it was a very good design. It would take America quite a lot longer before they came out with something like the M40 in their, you know, service to actually make a good mask. But I'd say the Israelis probably beat it by um, re redesigning the German M65 as the Israeli M15 and making that a really practical mask. But for the most part, I think the S10 is one of the masks that really was ahead of its time for all the features it had. And it still holds up today. A lot of nations have S10s and variants where they bought them from Britain or bought them from other countries. Avon Rubber, the company that made the S10, designed it and made it. They've got lots of successful masks they're still selling. Funnily enough, the Avon M50 is used now in US service. So Avon kind of got the last laugh on the British government, I think, when they were screwed over by them. Because lots of other companies, and uh, sorry, lots of other countries still buy Avon stuff, so... Avon, you know, is still existing, thankfully. They're still designing lots of good protective gear. And, um, yeah, their masks still hold up, pretty much all of them, for the times they were designed, and they were all very good masks. Um, the, as far as I'm aware, the S10 is definitely designed by Avon. However, the S6, I've heard conflicting reports, some saying Avon designed it, some saying Leyland Rubber designed it, and others saying that Port and Down and the Ministry of Defence designed it. Um, and as I said, I've seen reports for each, I don't know which is true, but from what I can understand, the S6 is more of a collab design job, whereas the S10, as far as I'm aware, was all down to Avon Rubber, making their own sort of respirator. And that's why, like, the CT12 and the FM12 all sort of end up looking like the S10 just improved. So there we go, the S10, what a great mask. If you find one cheap on the surplus market, buy it, you will not regret it. These are really good masks.